and so many new faces kind of in these groups. I know the last camp as well. Just, I guess, what's the overall goal um, with the group that you called in here? So there are a few objectives uh, that we want to achieve in this uh, camp. Uh, one of them uh, being uh, learn and uh, implement the principles, uh, our principles of play, and uh, execute them actually in games as uh, as close as possible. Uh, another objective that we have for this group is to to build that cohesion, to build uh, the relationships and strengthen the relationships between uh, certain uh, certain uh, individuals, certain players, but also between the lines, uh, defense and midfielder and uh, attacking line. I'm sure you've gotten this question before, but is it fun for you as a coach to kind of pick and choose different pieces, see how they work together, and just kind of build that chemistry, see it unfold in front of you? Yes, absolutely. I mean, that, that is one of the uh, one of the good things about uh, about this job is uh, you have such a great individual, such a great uh, talent in front, and uh, you just uh, have to make the right decision. So uh, for for us, uh, obviously, uh, every every game that we play, it's an opportunity to get better, opportunity to uh, opportunity to prepare for uh, what is even more important, the qualifiers, uh, and then hopefully World Cup 2023. Uh, so in this uh, in this game, like I said, uh, we have a certain objective set, and we just uh, have to get better. We have to evolve and uh, and get better in uh, terms of executing our principles. Uh, uh, learning about certain individuals and uh, also one thing that is very important uh, this new group that we have it's uh, it's a group of players that don't really have lots of minutes lots of caps but it, so it's important to put these players uh, through international experience regardless of the opponent you find that Rose and Aubrey are telling you where to eat and where to uh, where the hot spots are. Rose is uh, more about uh, recommending places. She uh, she's a pizza lover, so every <laughs> yes, and she did uh, send me send me a, a write up uh, that uh, Ohio <laughs> is, Ohio ranks uh, among the uh, it's number one state in uh, pizza pizza places or so, because uh, I. Yeah, she sent me. Uh, she sent me an article that I had to read, and she's very proud of it. Wow! Who knew? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know. <laughs> uh, to play in uh, Lower Dot Count Field and uh, to be a part of that uh, place, which is getting rave reviews even globally, excited about that? Very excited. Uh, I haven't uh, haven't been there. Uh, obviously, I've seen it on TV. I'm very excited to to be there. But I have to say, I have an emotional attachment to the city of Columbus. This was, uh, this was the city where I coached my first game uh, for the national team. Yeah. Even though it was at a different stadium, I'm, uh, I'm excited to be back and excited to, uh, excited to coach again. Um, lots of excitement around Trinity. Obviously, what are you looking for her out of this game? <clears throat> Uh, this camp is not any different than the previous camp that Trinity was in. Uh, we want to integrate her uh, slowly into the system, uh, introduce her to um, introduce her to the system, and uh, help her get better, get better around the players uh, uh, that she's surrounded with. Maybe it seems obvious, but from a coaching perspective, how beneficial is it to have people with that? World Cup experience, Olympic experience around so many faces that are trying to get acclimated to what you're doing here? It is extremely important. Uh, it would be very difficult to, to bring uh, 25 players that have never been at, uh, at uh, international level or never been at, uh, at World Ch uh, Championship uh, Olympic tournament. So that's why players like uh, Kelly O'Hara and uh, Rose Lavelle, Lindsay Horan, uh, Alyssa Nair uh, are extremely important for everything that is going on on the field but also off the field preparing the players and helping them uh, becoming true professionals. Blanco, on the uh, injuries in the NWSL, seems like it's been a hot topic this uh, Challenge Cup with the added matches. What concerns do you have already Lynn and Tierna out for the year uh, with the team coming in and just trying to stop those injuries from happening? It is unfortunate, actually, how many injuries have happened in a short period of time. But uh, uh, we're in uh, close communication with uh, the medical staff from uh, every team and the high performance uh, staff. And we're trying to align everything uh, fr from what they do on their side uh, with what we do on our side to make sure that uh, we don't jeopardize any more injuries uh, for the players. So every data uh, that we have, that, uh, that uh, everything that we do on our field goes back to them and vice versa. So that's why some of the players uh, that, uh, that are here, even though they're healthy, they may not play two times 90 minutes uh, because of that reason. We don't want to jeopardize anything. We uh, obviously take in consideration uh, what these players are going to do when they go back in their market. 
And how does that lineup kind of look then for Saturday with, like you mentioned, some players not being able to play? Um, what are the kind of time allotments you're going to have for some of the players that you're kind of watching for? I mean, the, the lineup is going to look good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the lineup is going to look very good. No, like, like I said, uh, we do take in consideration uh, the three games that they pl uh, played in uh, seven or eight days. Uh, some players uh, are traveling overseas and played uh, also uh, three games in eight days, uh, like Lindsay Horan and, uh, or uh, Kate Macario played 90 minute games. Uh, she, uh, they just arrived. So, all these things uh, are taken in consideration. And, uh, we're just going to have to put the, the puzzle together and make sure that, uh, like I said, we do have a strong lineup throughout all 90 minutes. Thank you. Hey, Vlatko, Aubrey just talked a little bit about one of the things being breaking down a low block as a focus in this camp heading into CONCACAF qualifying. Could you talk a little bit about what principles you're really looking at in that final third to break down those low blocks? Yeah, so uh, there are several different ways uh, or several uh, different approaches when, you, uh, when you're trying to break down low block. One of the things that we've been very focused on uh, with uh, the players that we have on the team uh, now, uh, the, the players like um, Kate Macario, Mel Pugh, and Lindsay Horan, Rose Lavelle, what, what we see is um, we see a technical sophistication and creativity. So we will try to, to break them down uh, with uh, short and precise and accurate passes uh, uh, in the in the middle channel, in the central channel. But of course, we're also going to look um, look to penetrate uh, and progress on the sides and on the wings and uh, and uh, de deliver quality crosses because we do have players that have ability to penetrate on the side in one v one one v one v one abilities. You know, the likes like. Uh, Sophie Smith and Mitch Purse, Trini Rodman there, Mel. So all these players have uh, have uh, such a tremendous quality that uh, we're, we're going to try to balance and, uh, and see what would fit the best. And can you talk a little bit about the goalkeeper squad? You've got Alyssa, obviously, who's a veteran of the team, but then two goalkeepers who haven't made uh, appearances for the U.S. Women's National Team yet. Can you talk a little bit about that and what you're hoping to see from them? Yes, uh, the goalkeeping position uh, is just like every other position on the team. The, the competition is uh, tremendous. Uh, as you said, uh, we have uh, three goalkeepers here and uh, all three of them are great goalkeepers. I mean, uh, obviously, Elisa has such a great experience. She showed, uh, she showed what she can do on international level. But then you have someone like uh, Aubrey that uh, there's, uh, there's constantly proving that she's one of the best goalkeepers uh, in the country, being uh, being named goalkeeper of the year and uh, winning championships for, for her team. So the competition, uh, in uh, the inner competition is tremendous. And uh, we probably have seen the, the best of the of the goalkeepers in, in camps in the last few camps, uh, camps uh, ever. So we're going to continue pushing that just like every other position, uh, build a competition and uh, and allow the play, uh, allow the goalkeepers to showcase themselves in the best possible light. Thank you. Yep. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you.